Okay, Kane Richardson, um, you decided to pull out of the um, of the IPL for birth of your first child. Um, difficult decision or easy? Uh, always difficult to, I guess, withdraw from a competition such as the IPL. It's um, kind of the pinnacle domestic competition in in the world. So it wasn't an easy decision, but I think um, when I really sat down and thought about it, it's definitely the right one with all that's going on in the world at the moment. And um, I think just the challenge around getting home on time for something as unpredictable as the birth of a child, um, yeah, I couldn't risk uh, missing that. So uh, disappointing to miss the IPL, but hopefully there's opportunities ahead for that. And I don't think I'd ever um, be able to live with missing the birth of, a, of, of my first kid. So yeah, hopefully I can be home and um, support my wife as best I can. And um, yeah, those opportunities will come around again. Well, that was my next question was, you know, you, you you wouldn't want to look back in this, back on this in 10, 20 years time, would you? And, and think, well, you know, wish I had been there. Yeah, that's right. I mean, cricket's, um, I, we've had five months off, but cricket's hopefully always going to be there. So, um, yeah, I think the, the main thing for me is to support my wife. As cricketers, we're away for a lot of things, you know, birthdays, weddings, that kind of thing. But um, I think there comes a time when you prioritise your family over, over anything else. And I think at the moment in the world, um, a lot of people are doing that. So I think, yeah, it was just an easy decision. Yeah. Um, last time you were here in 2018, England 5-0, um, JL actually sees that as a watershed time, really, to, to get that thumping uh, and then to come back from that. Um, similar les lessons learnt from yourself? Yeah, I think um, well, it's a completely different team to begin with to what's um, back here now and even from the World Cup last year. So, um, yeah, I think everyone took a, a little bit out of that. It's probably rock bottom in terms of where we're at as a team. So to, to build back up from the two years it's been since then has been really good. and. Um, guys probably just didn't have confidence back then it was a really young bowling group so it's nice to have um, experience in terms of the bowling group as well to, to rely upon so yeah I think every individual who's on that trip would would remember that for the wrong reasons but you learn a lot from those kind of um, situations so yeah it's nice to look back on and learn from and hopefully that kind of thing doesn't happen again we just move on and play better cricket. Yeah and are you have, have you um, been one impressed by England and think two that you guys can challenge them in both forms in the, over the next 14, 16 days? Yeah, I mean, they're super impressive. They have been um, on that, 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 that occasion in 2018. They won the World Cup last year, um, which I was a part of as well. And then um, we've all seen what they've done kind of around the world um, since then. So, yeah, they're, they're a massive challenge. Um, but I think uh, in terms of how we match up against them, we do uh, with the two, two best teams in the world in T20 cricket in terms of the rankings. So. I think that's pretty mouth-watering and if you're a fan watching this so um, there's star stars on each team and usually in t20 stars win the game for you so um, it's going to be a really good contest and it's it's always going to be a tight race between behind Paddy and, and Starkey um, in the in the t20 side I mean you you're obviously the incumbent in that third spot do um, um, you feel you you're ready for, 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 for to do that again well, I guess coming off five months of doing nothing, you, you don't really know until we start. But in, um, I think if I look back in the last 12 months, I feel like I've um, done the job in the, the 10 games I think we've played. So it's been a really nice kind of period for our T20 team and it's been nice personally to be a part of it. So you never feel 100% comfortable um, behind those guys. But um, yeah, hopefully my name's called on, on Friday night and I can come in and do a job. But you know, there's, there's a fair group of fast bowlers here with a big touring party so I'm sure whoever gets a nod would do a really good job behind those two. And um, a lot of good performances with the bat over the last couple of days, um, which is, was there any particular batter that impressed you the most? Yeah, there was a few to choose from, um, but I think I think Marnus yesterday, um, T20 probably hasn't been his, his format, so um, to get the opportunity to open the batting in that last, last game, I think he showed some people what he can do and there's probably some surprise in in the field at the time with some of the shots he was playing, he was almost batting like a mini AB de Villiers, I think someone said. So um, that was pretty impressive and yeah, that's a fair endorsement. But, you know, th throw a blanket over Carey. Um, he got 150 yesterday. Even Paddy Cummins slogged a few last night. So it's nice to see the bowlers doing some work with the bat. But um, yeah, I think most of the boys are looking um, forward to Friday with some confidence. And you mentioned um, before, you know, there's a lot of different bowlers here at the moment. Have you picked up anything in particular from, from any of the other guys um, over the last week or eight days? Um, oh, not, not necessarily in that space of time, but I think um, from watching guys, you know, Riley, Meredith and 
Daniel Sams on their first tour. I think everyone's individual strengths are, are so different to each other. Um, you know, AJ's known for his his knuckleballs and his variations, but he's got a new action now and bowler reports he's bowling a bit quicker. So I think everyone just brings a little bit of variety in their own individual um, strengths or weapons. So I think that's what you want in the bowling attack. And, you know, there's nine of us, so there's a, a, a pretty good um, kind of role to play for each each one of us at some point. Yeah, it gives certain selectors an amazing amount of options, doesn't it? It does, yeah. I mean, Riley's someone who bowls 150 kilometres and obviously we know what Starkey and Camo can do, so that's a pretty nice fall to have for those guys if if he gets a nod and, and if, if, if it's someone else like a Sams or a Ty or um, Sean Abbott as well as another guy who um, has a lot of different tricks up his sleeve. So, yeah, I feel like we've got all bases covered there. Yeah, so... Here we are in the bubble, our first bubble, probably the first of a few to come, I'd, I'd imagine, <laughs> over the next over the next few months. Anything stick out for you in terms of life here and what, it, what it's all about? Yeah, oh, I think for me personally, I've just tried to get outside, um, you know, for a minimum of half an hour every day to try and, I think I walked 10 k's of laps around, around the uh, outfield here the other day, which is, sounds a bit boring, but it took an hour and a half and it was nice. So, um, yeah, but yeah, there's so many different little clicks in the group. There's coffee clubs, there's um, Formula One, there's golf on the PlayStation. I think boys are playing golf on the course and then they'll go into their room and play golf on the PlayStation. So that's probably not my cup of tea, but um, yeah, boys seem to be um, taking care of themselves when it comes to the time away from cricket. You talk about the coffee clubs, there seems to be three or four and it seems to be a, um, a competition within itself that, you know, who, who's going to come to my joint today? Would you, would you agree with that? I mean, Warner's every morning. Coffee's open. Yeah. Does anyone actually go today? Or? I actually have, which is um, which is surprising. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty quick trip to Dave's because uh, he tends to chew your ear off. So um, I think one guy will come in, get his coffee, and then the next guy will be in. So... Um, you know, Marnus has set up his little little machine. I think Dave bought one over here and he tried to one-up Marnus, so he bought a better machine. So I'm not sure that necessarily means a better cup of coffee, but um, boys are trying to please all, all their teammates, which is nice for, for those who want a coffee fix. Sampa said the Love Cafe is an invite only. Do, do you have an invite? I've never actually asked for an invite. Um, I don't think he's invited me, no, but it's not my cup, again, not my cup of coffee, I guess I'll say, because he doesn't like putting milk with his coffees, so um, yeah, he's a bit of a coffee snob, I think. He tries to buy the best beans, the most expensive beans. To me, it all tastes the same, so I'll just stick with um, Davies Cafe. <laughs> In playing basketball with Sam's, I mean, there's a, there's a mismatch if you've ever seen one. Like, what, How does that work? Well, I think the ring's made for 10-year-olds, so probably brings me back down to his level, I guess you could say. So. Um, He's dunking all over the place. He feels like Michael Jordan, I think he said. So I don't think he's ever picked up a basketball before this trip. But um, yeah, it's something to do to pass the time, I guess. So if anyone's dunking, wouldn't you be dunking over him? Yeah, I, I, I just try and pass him the ball. It's almost like when you play with your son out the back. Well, I guess I'm getting getting some practice in for when the, the, the child comes, but it's almost like you, you try and do everything to make him feel good about himself. So throw him a few alley-oops and stuff like that. So you just confirmed that your first child's a boy? It is a boy, yeah, so I gave that one away. But uh, yeah, it's almost like a little Zamps. He is like a little boy running around, so you do whatever to put a smile on his face. Thanks. <laughs>